Okay, you caught me pouting on this Easter. It was not what I expected. So I'm consuming an entire chocolate bunny. It's hollow, so it doesn't really count. And I'm reflecting on how much I obviously didn't realize I thought Easter was about me <laughs> because there were certain elements that without having I felt like Easter didn't happen in fact it felt lonelier and like somehow more isolating than than all the days leading up to it and I had such hopeful expectations I really did I thought I thought it'd be the same. It wasn't. And then I realized, slowly, I wasn't actually celebrating resurrection at all. At least not resurrection of this radical Jesus story. Because what I wanted to res resurrect was like ham and being obnoxious with my family and stuffing eggs and nodding across the congregation at somebody I loved and singing a hymn and feeling like I did a good thing. But that's not radical. That serves me. And if what I think resurrection is actually supposed to be about is this one sacrifice for all people, then there's a whole lot that I'm going to have to be crucified in. A whole lot of ego stuff. I have a lot to repent of. I realized, oh man, I'm going to have to repent. Happy real Easter, Kate. You need to repent that I think that my life is great because I worked hard and if anybody else worked hard, their life could be great too. I have to confess that I'm a white person in a white country. And I'm just not going to have challenges that other people have. And if I keep avoiding that or denying that, I'm contributing to the harm. I need to not resurrect those concepts. I need to leave those there. I need to let those die. Happy real Easter and dying to my old self means that there, get there are times that I hesitate speaking what I think is really true. And I think that I should just blindly trust and not educate myself on certain topics because other people probably know what they're doing and it's exhausting and it's conflicting and it induces a whole lot of resistance to question the norm. But Christ in me says that no person should get to tell another person how they're allowed to be in the world if it doesn't cause harm and I need to advocate for the voiceless. Old me says I'm just one person, so just eat my darn chocolate and ignore my opiate-addicted neighbor or all the people who are sitting in cells my unhoused siblings my conservative friends who would disagree with me but that's not radical that's not the foolishness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's not really resurrection. That's not real Easter. This Easter, I'm invited to remember that Galatians 2.20 tells me my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is not I that lives, but Christ in me. <sighs> that it was God who gave himself for me and for you and for my neighbor, and respect and human dignity is all of ours. And this Easter may be the holiest of them all. Because this Easter, albeit involuntarily, I'm suddenly really aware of all the people around me. 
So I confess to being sad about Easter because I thought Easter was about me. And I confess and repent for my participation in benefiting from racism, of sexism, and being a perpetrator of sexism, internalizing that voice within myself. I confess that I've participated in socioeconomic prejudices. I want a real Easter. I want Easter of 1 Corinthians 2 and 2 that says, I've decided while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ, the one crucified. And acknowledge, I don't have enough people in my life that make me forget my privilege. I don't even notice it because the people around me are just as privileged as I am. But maybe I can be purposeful. Maybe that's the resurrection, the deliberate intention to be disrupted. Forget all these other things except Christ. Christ's death, the resurrection, it's powerful because it's radically inclusive and hospitable. So this is my prayer request for this resurrection season. Albeit considerably late. <laughs>